Do y'all ever buy a book because its reputation precedes it to the point where just out of sheer print interest, you have to read it and you just have to know what's in there? Well, this time I effed around and found out and I read Bear by Marion Engel. See that hand? How it looks kind of suggestive and all that luxuriant bear fur? Yeah, that, that's on purpose. So <laughs> Bear is a book that I just had to know about because on the one hand, it's considered a great Canadian novel. It won basically the Canadian equivalent of like a national book award. It's considered a great piece of literature. It is also about a woman who has a sexual relationship with a literal bear. So if that is too much for you, trigger warning, run away now. Um, I'm not going to like get into too many details because I like to keep my channel relatively safe for work, but uh, this is the least safe for work sort of book I'm going to be covering anytime soon. So the thing that's interesting about Bear is that everybody wants to talk about Bear for like the more lurid scenes. And what's really funny is like the original cover of this book way played that up. I'm going to put it right here for you because wow, that is a book cover. Honestly, if I found that at a used bookstore, I'd buy it just for sheer perience. Yes, I am that person. But I am going to just say outright that while that part of Bear is a little bit eyebrow raising, the fact is that this really is an excellent work of literature. It's well written, and I am glad that I read it. So Bear is about a librarian named Lou who has kind of lost sight of herself in her life. She has become a librarian, but she's using this to hide from her life. She's not very social. She is sort of frumpy. She's in this very limited contained world. She's working in a basement that's super dusty. And like there are times when she likes that and it makes her feel safe. And then there are other times when it makes her feel like maybe her life is passing her by and she's sad about it. All of this changes when a large estate is left to her library in someone's will and somebody has to go out there and catalog all the books. So Lou goes out into the wilds of Canada. She checks out this bizarrely luxurious house that's in the middle of nowhere, which is kind of cool. She begins to catalog the library and she encounters a pet bear that lives in the backyard. Not a whole lot is said about why a bear is kept on this estate, but it is clear from the notes of a colonel who previously lived on this estate that there's a bit of a bear obsession going on. So she ends up cataloging all these papers that fall out of books about bears. So this is about obsession with a bear, both on Lou's part and on the part of people who lived there before her. And it just really makes me wonder. Anyway, even before things get crazy with the bear, Lou really enjoys her time alone on this estate, which I really understand because I also am an introvert and I love to be by myself. So she's just out in the wilds, being alone, checking out these books, taking time to read, and she is probably happier than she's ever been. There are a couple of people that she knows locally who have like helped her get to this house. But for the most part, she's getting to enjoy her days in solitude with like occasional river trips down to a general store. So there's a man named Homer who's basically helping her out along with his son. And I'll bring him up more in a moment. So what's really interesting is that this is definitely not like a sexy bear story. In no way is this bear truly presented as something that is like, hot or attractive. Like this is not a beauty and the beast thing or like a morning glory milking farm sort of thing. This is really about a woman projecting her desires onto an animal. And even from the very first scene, it's quite clear that this bear is not special in the way that you would be looking for if you wanted a book that was just about like hot bestiality or something. That's not what we're going for here. So here's like our first big visual of the bear. The bear stood in the open on all fours and stared at her, moving its head up, down, and sideways to get a full view of her. Its nose was more pointed than she'd expected. Years of corruption by teddy bears, she supposed, and its eyes were genuinely piggish and ugly. She crossed the yard and pumped it a pail of water. She set the pail down quite near it, nearer than she thought she ought to have dared, but the bear looked so passive she could not genuinely fear it. In the stable doorway, it had looked smaller. 
Now she could see that it was what Homer would call a good size, up to her hip and long with it, a full-grown bear with a scruff like a widow's hump. As it turned to drink, she got a large whiff of shit and musk. It was indubitably male, she saw, and its hindquarters were matted with dirt. After it drank thirstily, it curled up again by the barn door. It looked stupid and defeated. She hunkered where it could not reach her and stared at it. Its nose was like a dog's, but broader. Its snout was narrow. Its eyes were close together. It was not a handsome beast, and it would not be if it always lived at the end of that chain. So basically, her relationship with Spare starts as kind of like a pitying relationship where she actually does get bold enough to take it for walks on its chain. She lets it swim in the water. She ends up swimming with the bear. And it kind of just seems like a sweet animal story for the most part, um, with just a sign that something might be weird where as she jumps out of the water, the bear like licks water off of her back and she notes that that feels interesting. And that's it. Until it turns out that when, one night when she leaves the bear off the chain, it actually comes in the house and like knows its way around. So she ends up kind of hanging out and reading with this bear by the fire. And she gets really hot and bothered one night. She decides to make love to herself. And the bear, which likes to just sort of lick fluids off of skin anyway, clearly, just kind of like licks the salt off of her skin. And she guides the bear to where it's licking something else. And she finds that very enjoyable. So <laughs> her relation with this bear is mostly about the bear getting her off. In fact, it's very persistent throughout the book that the bear is not very sexually interested in her. Um, the bear only kind of gets it up one time. And it's like the climactic messed up scene of the book, which I won't spoil entirely for you. But what's so interesting about this is that, you know, her obsession with this bear is just consuming. She likes that she smells like the bear. She spends time like looking at the bear's gums and like licking them. Um, it's really ugh, for somebody who's not in that situation. But Marion Engel does a good job of kind of helping you understand why that would be. And the way she does that is by giving you insight into uh, Lou's previous relationships with men. So there was a man that she was with who basically callously dumps her for another woman. And it's pretty clear that she was a crazy ex at one point. She absolutely lost it and acted just crazy about the end of this relationship. And she has not had a real relationship since. Uh, she does, however, have cravings as a sexual being. So she has sex with the director of the library on the regular. It's like sex by appointment. And interestingly, she also has a bit of a thing with Homer, who is the married man with the son, who is helping her while she's on this estate. And it's really clear from her relationship with the director that she feels a lack of emotional attachment and that there's no attention really being given to her. So she feels lonely. And I think even with Homer, she clearly finds him like exciting. It's not that she dislikes him, but first of all, he comes on to her the first time and she says no. And he gets really snitty about it and is basically like, well, I'm not going to help you out of my good kind heart anymore. You're just going to bill me through your institution. He gets really cold and she has to like talk him back into a friendship. And that's gross. And the other thing that's kind of interesting is that at one point they do actually consummate their attraction. And really it just feels like it's about Homer. Like all the scenes with the bear are about Lou's pleasure and what Lou is experiencing and her needs. And once there is a human man involved, it doesn't really feel like it's about that anymore. And I think that that's the origin of her obsession with this bear. Because the bear, even though it is a bear and it's not a handsome bear as we've noted, um, Lou is able to kind of map her emotions onto this bear. Like at one point she notes that she could really just read any feelings onto this creature that she wanted to. And she does. And, you know, that's not really fair to the bear whose actual needs, wants, and intentions are unknown throughout the book. But that also is fitting, right? Because Lou needs space for her own feelings and for her own needs to finally, for some point, period of time come to the front of the picture. And I really think that having an animal in there is, it's disturbing, right? But it also fits interestingly into what is clearly a comment about sexism and about sexual relationships and about desire and about how 
women are objects of desire and how they could find an object of their own to map their own desires out upon. So this actually was a very interesting read. There's also just kind of interesting little bits of Canadian attitudes in history, especially from out on the frontier. So, you know, there are Indians that get mentioned in the book. And it's not exactly like these communities are totally unintegrated, but there is like a little edge of discomfort because you can tell that racism is real. It's just kind of like very subtly included in the tapestry of this book. I also just want to note this book is super well written. I was really in it with Lou on her cozy nights in the in this library and you know her reconnection with nature both in terms of being outside and like trying to start a garden and going swimming and in terms of her relationship such as it is with the bear. And Ingle has a really amazing way of kind of drawing you in and so much is happening in this book even though it's very short. Like this thing is maybe like 160 pages or something. It's a little book really a novella. And yet it actually had quite an impact on me. It's very interesting. And I'm glad I read it. So I picked it up because I am a child and I just wanted to read something lurid. And I was curious. But I'm glad that I stuck it out as a reader, because I do feel like I got some literary value out of this book. And if you can handle the uncomfortable content, then I think that you might get a lot out of it too. So that's Bear by Marian Engel. Have you read this book? Having heard my review, would you read this book? Or am I just weird? Let me know in the comments. Please like and subscribe and happy reading.